everyone, my name is Corza Corpse and welcome back to another episode of my podcast, The Corpse Cast. And I am once again joined via a very special guest today. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yo, what is up? First of all, before I introduce myself, I need to give a shout out to the amazing Corza Corpse. Thank oh. you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here. I can't appreciate I can't thank you enough, I should say. Ah, uh, no what's problem. What's up, everybody? My name is Steven, also known as Noah, or now, most recently, Mr. Derek Johnson. That's what I think, out of all those three, I would prefer to go by is Derek Johnson. <laughs> He's got the coolest lives of the three of them, so we'll just say that. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm very excited to be here. I am, I too. Figure out wh- what's going down. I know nothing going into this. <laughs> so excited. Well, what I'm going to be asking you today is just some questions about you know who you are what you like to do as a youtuber content creator some questions about this Disven- venture camp and kruger mansion in there we'll we'll see how it goes are you ready awesome yeah let's do it <laughs> i'm excited me too okay so first of all probably the easiest and hardest question to answer right off the bat who are you who are you what do you do what do you enjoy doing oh god that <laughs> is the hardest question because I could say so many things or nothing at all, and I feel like I would still get the point across, because, you know, you ask me today, and I'll give you a different answer than if you ask me tomorrow. At this moment, I am a man still chasing his childhood dream, (laughs) and I'm so, so ungodly thankful for all of these amazing people on this planet that allow me to do these things that I love. Aww. I'm trying to build something pretty different than anything done before. Yeah. And too much surprise. That's a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Just, so just a little. I'm taking a lot of fat L's along the way. <laughs> but with all those L's comes a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. And we're slowly building our way. Uh, you mentioned Kruger Mansion earlier. That is, uh, I think that's going to be the start of something big. Oh, I'm I'm so excited for Kruger Mansion. <laughs> I'm so excited. Likewise. Okay, so, question two. So, who were some of your inspirations when starting out your YouTube channel? And who are your inspirations now when creating content? Because your content is very different now from how it was years ago. Yeah. Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, mm, got me thinking. When I started YouTube, see, it's difficult for me because I have, like you said, I've, I've done so many different styles of videos. So yeah. believe it or not, for the total drama people, I, I, that wasn't what I first started YouTube with. I know that that's, uh, that's going to be what news, but I did not originally make Total Drama videos. I actually did a lot before I did Total Drama. I started YouTube August 31st, 2010 was my first ever video, which is kind of crazy because I was only nine when I made that video. Oh, wow. And it was, uh, I can't remember exactly what the skit, the, the skit itself was, but it was some type of skit. And I I just would get me and all of my friends from school that would be down to be in these videos. As soon as school got out, I was riding my bike over to their house. We were recording just absolutely batshit crazy (laughs) skits. Like, just stuff that made absolutely no sense. It didn't need to make sense. we would come up with it. Yeah, impromptu, just improv everything. We were just... I, I don't know. We were just kids having fun, you know, hanging out and then making videos with it. And so I, that's how I started doing YouTube was making just skits where we were, yeah, just yeah. absolute nothingness would happen all at once. It was just absurd. Yeah. And the YouTuber, to answer your question after yapping forever, the YouTuber <laughs> that inspired me to do that stuff was actually a plethora of people but the main one was this dude named make me bad 35 i would be very surprised if anybody knows who he is because he hasn't been around in a hot minute his real name is damien and uh he was a huge inspiration for me in making those styles of videos but to transition to the total drama side of things Mm -hmm. the main inspiration for me to start making cartoon videos was honestly 
Dang, that's a good question. With total <laughs> drama, I don't know. There, there really wasn't a lot of people. I, I would hate to say the individual's name who inspired me, but there was uh -oh. uh, a certain person who used to be a uh, big personality within to the total drama world uh, who no longer works with that show. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, yep. He used to make some banger videos back in the day with yep. uh, the old cast, and that was a big one that inspired me um, to start talking about total drama because I saw that and I realized dang nobody is really talking about this show because there were so many show uh, channels like channel frederator if you remember them yeah and uh loo tunes and all of oh, the yeah. og total drama or, or og cartoon youtubers rather yeah they were so big doing these awesome things but there were anybody or there wasn't anybody talking about total drama like it, it just wasn't ever talked about and it kind of you know 11 year old me it, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way you know i'm like <laughs> this show's good like where's the credit yeah why is nobody giving it its flowers and so i started from there and the rest is history here i am 12 years later <laughs> 12 oh my god 12 years <laughs> yeah. oh my god i started total drama videos this will age me i started total drama videos before total drama revenge of the island was released are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. My first channel was actually, the, the one that I did Total Drama stuff was in 2011. It was called Super Steven TM, and it was a total ripoff of this dude named Elias Paybon, who had an amazing oh channel called Super Elias TM. Oh my gosh. I ripped off his name, so shout out Elias. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> where, he's, where he's at, what he's up to. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to start somewhere. I feel like everyone, as a kid, kind of takes inspiration from people who they looked up to oh yeah yeah you, you know you were a kid but that's <laughs> that's crazy to think revenge of the island that was what 2012 2013 2012 is at least whenever it came out in the united states so i'm not sure in canada i was i was seven in 2012 what the f oh my god <laughs> that just brought back yeah. a wave of nostalgia oh my god i would i was 11 oh my god um kind of continuing on with the flow of total drama how did you discover the show and why does it appeal so much to you like you know mm, that's a good question because i feel like it is one of those shows it's very rare it's been able to have so many people interested in it for completely different reasons and yeah it's very special a lot of shows can't capture that and total drama has been able to do that so for that Fresh TV should be very proud. Mm. Uh, with that being said, for me, I actually found Total Drama. I've talked about this before on my channel. Shout out Noah on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> you'll you'll I, get yourself promotion at the end. <laughs> yeah, no. But I, uh, I used to just straight up play the games on the Cartoon Network website. Oh my god! And I saw there was this new game for Total Drama Island, and I'm like, Total Drama? What the hell is this? So I, I'm clicking it. And, you know, I see this game, and it was really dope. This is a deep cut for those that remember the game. Oh, God. It, I believe it was called Totally Interactive. Oh, my I God. I played, like, a bootleg. <laughs> Somebody had, like, ripped it and, like, you know, illegally uploaded it online or whatever, and I played it for YouTube. I didn't care. I was oh like, yeah, I'm playing this. It was fun, but it used to be a lot more immersive than the, you know, version now. Cause yeah. Because, of course, they were updating it live back then. And they used to have, like, you could see on the dock, there was the entire 22 cast lineup for the original cast of Island. And after every episode would release in the United States, they, whoever got eliminated would be turned gray. Yeah. Like, they would just completely desaturate their characters. And just stuff like that, I don't know what it was oh about that, but that just tickled my brain. You know, it just, it just hit something where I was like, this is cool. I like this. And then... I just kept watching it from there. That's whenever I started watching it. Yeah. Uh, World Tour was the f first season I'd ever seen on television, and Revenge of the Island was the first one I ever watched while actively making YouTube videos on it. Okay. My God, totally interactive. Those Flash games, the Dodgeball one especially, that was my yeah. childhood. That was my childhood. <laughs> Yeah, dodgeball was cool. The food fight one was cool too, because it was basically the exact same game, just yeah. food instead of balls. It was <laughs> balls. But um, 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So, and one thing I really appreciated about Total Drama back in the day is that it felt real in the sense of, you know, like, it, wa it was a real game of Survivor back then. I mean, yeah. obviously it was scripted and not real, but it felt real. It was it was very magical. I miss those days of Total Drama. I feel like it, it'll yeah. never get that back. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be hard to capture that. Yeah. They got close in season two, and then, you know, yeah. we know how that went. Yeah. Well, okay. It's a good start. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. But, you know, kind of moving on from Total Drama for a second, kind of. Let's talk about this venture camp for a minute, because you know though that you are the voice Let's of do Derek. It. Yes. You are the voice of Derek. Um. So before this venture camp season one was the original beta version, and this venture camp season two, how did you just how did you discover this venture camp, and what were your first impressions on this fan season? So I remembered it whenever it was. I believe it was originally called adventure camp or total drama adventure camp yeah right? it was something along those lines yeah uh and then so i remember seeing that version i never actually watched it but I, it was always in my recommended tab and uh at that time i i don't know why i just w wasn't really watching custom shows and i think maybe it had come out right after reunion so i probably just had a sour taste in my mouth about yeah. it. I, I can't remember the timing but uh i had seen it you know, like I said, on the recommended tab and everything like that, but I never actually watched it until it became this venture camp. And I started watching it because of my amazing friend, Michael Kim. Ah, uh, yes. I found out was a part of the cast. And so I'm like, oh, well, I gotta support my man, Michael, and watch this. And I was watching it and I'm like, okay, this is actually good. <laughs> and now I have awful FOMO because I want to be in this cast like I instantly was jealous I'm like man this looks so fun I want to be in this and so whenever the auditions rolled around for the next season I was like hell yeah I gotta jump on that yeah and <laughs> perfect timing what was your yeah. initial reaction when getting casted as Derek oh you know it was actually crazy because <laughs> I was at work and I remember getting messages from the people that were working, like, you know, that were involved in casting. And they were just kind of like, hey, you know, uh, this isn't confirmation yet. I just want to let you know, like, uh, you're, you're still in the running. Like, the, you know, the things are looking good. We'll, we'll keep you updated. And then, you know, hey, there's this many people. Like, hey, you know, this, this, this. Like, you know, it just kept getting closer and closer. And I'm just like, I kept telling myself, like, listen, Steven, if you just go into it, with the expectation that you're not gonna get it then if you don't get it it's still gonna suck but at least it won't suck as bad as if you gaslight yourself and yeah you're gonna get it because then you're really gonna be disappointed if you don't get yeah it. so that's what i i had that mindset where like dang this would be really fun but you know i i was like eh i probably won't get it we'll see though yeah and uh so i was at work and I remember being behind the desk at, in the, the main cottage that I worked in at this job. Mm -hmm. And I felt my phone vibrate. And I looked and I saw who it was from. I can't remember if it was from uh, Jared or, or Robert or, or what the email was. But I remember seeing him just being like, oh, that's interesting. Because I had not heard from them directly. It was always, you know, people that worked with them. And yeah. so I opened it, and yeah, sure enough, I I saw that I had been cast, and I was like, there's no way. And I, I remember just standing there with, like, this massive smile on my face, just kind of <laughs> looking at it like, damn, that's real. Yeah. Like, I'm about to do this. This, this is about to be, like, the next couple years of my life. I'm about to to be a part of something like this and that was really really cool especially because i had already known how passionate the fan base was and so for me to be able to come in to an already established universe with so much love from the masses and so much hype and expectation there was a lot of pressure involved oh, yeah. too and it just it made me so 
much more appreciative of it, you know, because yeah. there were so many people that auditioned and I was the one that got chosen like that. It's it's still I, I've done two seasons of this guy now and I'm still like, what the hell? Like, I, this is me? Like, yeah. it's, it's just wild. Yeah. And imagine like, like again, seeing your voice coming out of a fictional character. It's got to be a crazy feeling. It's so weird. I, I was <laughs> like, I, of course, I'm watching it and I'm like, this this voice does not fit this guy at all he doesn't sound like him you know because i'm just being like self-critical and then i you know would every now and then get a message from somebody and they're like oh your voice for him is perfect and i'm like oh this is amazing like it, there's it's it's surreal there's because it is it, it genuinely is it's uh yeah I, i'm i'm so happy like, i i'm so lucky i'm really glad that you did get casted like genuinely i don't think it, Derek would be the same. I don't think any of the characters would be the same if it was someone else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, everyone kills it. Yeah. Like, I'm really happy that you were casted. And you do a phenomenal job. You really do. Thank um, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, now, continuing about Derek, um, how would you personally describe Derek's character to someone who hasn't watched this venture camp before? How would you describe him? <laughs> oh, okay. This is where my bias is going to come up. <laughs> Everyone else would be like, oh, yeah, he's the asshole of the two. He's the dick. He's the bad cop, and, and Trevor's the good cop. See, now me, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm the funny one. I'm the funny <laughs> one. So that's how I describe Derek, because I'm like, come on now. He's not, like, trying to be a dick. I mean, if we're being honest, yeah, Derek is not the nicest person in the world. However, I personally believe that he has a lot of redeeming qualities. He's yeah. a very charming individual. And he, uh, he's quick-witted, and he's very sharp, and he's kind of a dickhead about it. You know, he'll, he'll poke fun at you and take jabs at you, but he'll do it in a very clever way. And so he's somebody that you either just straight up do not like because you just don't like those types of people, or he's somebody that you're mad because you don't want to like him, but you end up liking him. Yeah. That's kind of how Derek is. Or there's just that... that fan base that's like no i love characters like that and so you're naturally drawn to him which is where i am which is why <laughs> i would describe him as a little nicer than some other people but overall i think i think most people will have a good time with him and trevor the funny one is crazy <laughs> i know <laughs> i know i know most people would say that trevor's the funny one silly billy's gonna be listening to this and he's gonna be like are you kidding me <laughs> Oh my god. On Discord soon. You know, they're both like fucking hilarious in their own different ways. It's just different kinds of comedy, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. They're they're really not comparable. Yeah. They bounce off each other so well. It's it's the pinky in the brain of total drama. Yeah, and it's it's really awesome because Jared and Robert really give Billy and I a ton of freedom with the stuff that we can do and we just like some of the stuff that have has come out of my mouth and Billy's mouth that wasn't a part of the script, like it's 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 insane. I'm so glad that they let us just have fun with it, and they they share that with the rest of the cast. And I think that's why this venture has been so special, and the characters seem so immersed because the cast is immersed because we're allowed to be, and that's rare. It really yeah, is. gives you a lot of creative freedom to really. Oh yeah. Yeah express like your own your own take onto the character as you're performing that's something i really do appreciate about this venture camp and um like it's casting yeah we appreciate you job it thank you thank you yeah yeah absolutely um and going into improvised lines what have been some of your favorite um line deliveries or or some of your favorite scripts that you've recorded uh, <laughs> during as Derek. So Michael Kim in season one gave me a line where I can't remember what exactly was happening in the episode, but it was probably like Ellie and Jack, uh, Ellie and Jake beefing or something. I don't remember, but they were fighting. I'm sorry, there's a train going on outside. If you can hear. How me. dare me. they? But. Uh, but so there's uh, something going on and uh, Derek's like, 
I was like, ooh, tension, yummers, something <laughs> like that, that Michael Kim made me say. And I was like, dude, what the hell? So I, I don't know. He, it was so, I guess it's like a, a reference to another show, but uh. I thought it was funny. So I, I like whenever I get those goofy lines. Uh, but one of my favorite ones that I was really happy got uh, a, a good reception in the live chat was whenever Trevor is just getting down in the production tent dancing <laughs> and he's trying to get Derek to dance with him and I'm just like that's not dancing you're having a seizure and I was I, that was just something I just came up with that like as I was recording and so whenever I heard that they used in the episode it made me so happy like it, it makes you feel so good when you improvise a line and they use it over the one that they wrote like you know that that makes you feel good yeah but that's probably my favorite one or at any time Derek ever says, oh, hell nah, that is never <laughs> in the script. They, they don't write that. That's, that's something that I'm always, anytime I'm <laughs> saying no or rejecting something, instantly I'm giving them four takes of me going, oh, hell nah. <laughs> so, much <laughs> so much sass. So much sass. I think the seizure line, it always gets me. I think it's just because I was just shocked that they used it. It just comes out of nowhere and you aren't expecting it. So when you hear it, you're like, what the fuck? That's what I love about this venture camp, because a lot of characters get those moments where they just say something totally out of left field. Like I I'm not to go on a tangent, but Raytix is amazing. Oh my as god. Alec, and he has a, an amazing line delivery in the first episode of All Stars where they're like, so Alec, why did you come back? And he just instantly goes, money. money. <laughs> that's that's the, best, the best line of that entire episode. I love, yeah. Anyway, sorry. No, do not apologize. That's what we're here for. We want tangents. <laughs> Ramble the life, your life away. I, I'm all here for it. It's what um, I'm good at. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, um, I know you kind of answered this question in my last question, but kind of adding on to that a bit more. What are some of your favorite parts about voicing Derek just in general? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, just I think a lot of the freedom that we get with what we can do is really nice because you can even tell if you go back and watch season one, you will hear at the start of how Derek is voiced by me and just kind of his character as a whole. And then as it progresses, you can see me get more comfortable and then yeah. letting us have more creative freedom. And yeah. Where that's whenever I really started being less anxious when recording and I just threw myself into the character. And I think that's whenever Derek started getting so much more life. So I can't thank Jared and Robert enough because if it wasn't for them, then, you know, Derek might have really just been kind of a dick who you just didn't like. <laughs> just and, a dick. and that wouldn't have really been very fun. So I'm glad that they've been able to let him have some life because it's been really fun. So that, that honestly has just been like my favorite part of voicing him and also being tied to Billy is cool because I know a lot of people love Billy so then I get to share that love. And, <laughs> uh, you know, he's just he's so good as Trevor. And yeah. So it's it's really nice to do a duo that is good because I didn't really know Billy uh, before Disventure Camp and so I was really nervous when they said it was another YouTuber who was coming in and doing it and I'm like oh man I really hope that he's not like just here because of who he is because I didn't I didn't know anything about him and so whenever I met him I was like okay yeah no we're good and, and <laughs> it's been the rest has been history he's yeah. been killing it and we've had great moments and that overall has just been so fun and then the people that like Derek that that's just the best anytime I see any fan art or anything like that like it's it's unreal it, it honestly weirdly I love the Derek appreciation and fan art more than the stuff that I got for like me whenever I was making <laughs> total drama videos Aww. full time like the Derek stuff just it hits it's different it hits different and just because there's so many characters in the cast and like you're choosing mine to be a fan of like Aww. i'm your favorite what like that's crazy yeah like because again kind of like what i was saying before like hearing your voice coming out of that character and then people loving that character and going as far as to make fan art that's such a surreal feeling 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's somebody who follows me on TikTok whose whole page is dedicated to posting clips of Derek Johnson <laughs> from this venture camp. And it makes me so happy every time I see their stuff. And it's so funny because I'll get a notification on my TikTok profile like once every two weeks. And it says that that same account viewed my page. And they're always looking at my stuff. <laughs> I, I, like, I love it. I, it makes me so happy. Like, I appreciate the people that like Derek so much. Yeah, like again, Derek and Trevor are like the dynamic duo of this venture camp. Like, let's be real. Yeah, they are comparable. Fun. They are the iconic duo. Mm. Mm. The, the iconic duo. Yes, they are. Like, okay, listen. Mm. I love Crystal and Oliver. They're great. They're 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 a fun pair, right? They're a fun hosting pair. Emily, yeah. Emily and Crystal. Yeah, they're fun. But Derek and yeah. Trevor. They are the duo. Nothing gets I, past them. I keep trying to convince people involved to do an Amazing Race spinoff and let me and Billy be contestants. Yes. Let us be a team. Yes. I keep trying to convince people. So if you want to see that, then bombard. No, please Not don't. Do don't get me in trouble. Don't get <laughs> Yeah, who knows? Maybe I can be... Uh, persuasive and, and make something happen i don't know i think they've they've probably got their own plans and i'm sure they're great but in my own world that's what i would do <laughs> okay y'all you hearing this we need redonkulous race spinoff fan art of Derek and <laughs> yeah. trevor we need them they, seriously though like straight up if if it, something like that is legitimately possible if people just keep supporting odd nations in the amazing way that they are eventually they could branch out have a whole team that works on just the spinoff like that's crazy talk hell yeah do that like that's a real thing and people think that that's something that's like so unattainable but odd nation cartoons man jared and robert are changing the game right now They're literally that you can do it from your house and they really I'm have so proud of them yeah they've grown so much within just a short amount of time like yeah. like the patreon names at the end of the episodes now they're like what 10 minutes long yo all i'm saying is if you get asked <laughs> to be the vo the character that says those lines at the episode, you better be ready to read some names for like 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> I remember I did, well, I, the first time I ever did one, I made the mistake of not reading the names before I started recording. And it was seriously in my brain. I'm like, how many names are on this list? Like it was never ending. It was amazing. Like it was, yeah, it, it's so, it, it's insane how much support they get. I love it. As they should. And I was, I remember reading a um, Twitter thread that Jared had posted. And each episode is between like a $2,000 to $4,000 budget. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, they have so many pieces to it. I mean, you're an artist. You know this better than anybody. <laughs> Art is not easy. Yeah. There's so many components that go into it. If anything, I, I I'm impressed so with the small budget. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, for real. Like yeah. the, the whole production and everything and it, it's so good. It Oh. Man. It like they they are so motivated. They really are. Like and the fact that they do it in such a short amount of time too. Yeah. Yeah. A, a month? Literally. A month you're turning out third like b listen, it was impressive when they were doing it with season one when our episodes were like 20 minutes long they're pumping out like 40 minute episodes like 30 to 40 minutes this entire season that's crazy i know jared robert please take a break we beg you yeah after all stars they definitely deserve a break i would not be upset if they took a, a, a very deserved vacation yes you guys deserve it please we appreciate you guys so much um yeah. Okay, now kind of moving away from this venture camp for a moment. Let's talk about Kruger Mansion. So Ooh, let's do it. Yes, as we know, or if if you're listening to this and you don't know, you are the voice of Riley. Riley Dunbar. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. So, uh, -huh. uh again, kind of like before, what was your initial reaction when you were cast as Riley? Uh, you know, it was it was really cool because. Derek and I have been friends for a while, and so when I found out that he was doing Kruger Mansion and with Adam Rudin, the amazing creator of Blue Studios, I was like, oh man, I bet a lot of my friends are going to be in this. <laughs> I'm going to be 
be really upset if I'm not in this. I have got to audition for this. Like, yeah. I would, I would be so mad at myself if I didn't give it a chance, you know? Yeah. So I audition, and I remember Derek being like, yeah, I've got this character who I think is, like, perfect for you. I've written him with you in mind. And so I'm like, man, if I don't get this on now, I'm really going to be fun. Like, <laughs> like, I got to get this now. So when he called me and he asked me if I could turn my, or I don't know if he asked me to turn my camera on. Maybe I hadn't shown my face on YouTube at that point. That was a while ago. But uh, he, uh, yeah, I remember him being like, I have something to tell you. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I, this is it. I definitely got it. That or he's going to tell me he got a new cat because he has Aww. done that before. But, <laughs> okay. uh, but yeah, he, he told me that he wanted me to be Riley and I was so hyped and he was like don't tell anybody and so i was like so oh man it was so difficult not to immediately call michael cam and dylan clark and be like yo any interesting phone calls recently you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was not, just anything you know but yeah i was so oh man that's been so fun yeah Riley is definitely a um a fan favorite that i've seen amongst the community and for good reason um, yeah. How would you personally describe the character of Riley yourself? How would you do it? See now, Riley, um, I, I can only defend him so much. He is an asshole. Yeah. He really is. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, he's kind of charming. That's like the only redeeming thing about him. Without going too much into story or anything like that, of course, Riley gives you a reason to like him. Ooh. And, uh, and he's he's really cool i like riley a lot he's a lot of fun and i really hope that the odd nation cartoons animation team grows even more so that they could potentially start doing more kruger mansion because i think not only does like the world need that but i need that yeah. i want that to happen so like yeah we, we need to see more Kruger Mansion and that plot man it's so good I'm not even just saying that because Derek and I are friends like, like it, it, it is really 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 special oh I'm so excited for when Kruger Mansion gets developed um mm, me I, too. Derek like tagged me in a tweet the other day being like oh yeah I know that you're gonna you're gonna crack this and you're gonna piece all the Oh, missing puzzles together 10, I yeah saw that tweet. <laughs> i was like oh god the pressure is on <laughs> the pressure is... Yeah. but for real though a bit of a um movie like kind of uh well what's the word um a bit off topic but if you guys can please go support totally tops television kruger mansion yes. needs as much love as possible derek if you're for watching real. this shout out to you i am so excited for the future of this show because it is so good so much yes. potential i'm so excited and Me too. Yeah. And so far, what has been your favorite part about voicing Riley? Oh, man. You know, with Riley, I think my favorite part with voicing him is that he's a contestant. Yeah. And oh. that's really fun. Because yeah. I haven't gotten to play a contestant. Yeah. And so, even in my normal life whenever these games are around i'm usually the one hosting it in my youtube video when we played survivor i was the one that hosted it yeah and so it was it's nice it's fun to be riley because he's a contestant and also because he's a very big role yeah and he has so much depth to oh. him and that's so fun because a lot of times people like riley are often written as the asshole and they only serve the purpose of making the hero's victory that much sweeter because people really don't want the asshole to win yeah and so it's nice out of just the little bit that we've gotten of kruger mansion you can already kind of see that there's a little more to him yeah and that's fun that's one of the... I get to I get to be a character. You know, and I don't get to do that very often. Yeah, I never really thought of it that way. I yeah. yeah, that's an interesting way to put it. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> and kind of adding on to what you were saying before, it feels like every character in Kruger Mansion feels relevant. 
Yes, yeah. yes, that is something Derek and I have talked about. It, it's really, really important to do that. Mm. Uh, him and I have have had that conversation many times, and I'm very glad that him and I we agree on a lot of things, and that's why him and I have been so close over the years. And he's he's really, really, really smart with how he's writing Kruger Mansion because. Mm. Every single character, like you said, is so important to the story. Yeah. Every one of them. I think I've only seen one other piece of media that has been able to make every single character of a story important. Um, it's a story-based game called Your Turn to Die. It's so good. And every mm. single character that's introduced plays a role. Even if they're in the story for two seconds, they're important. They're relevant. And that's something that I've always had a feeling that we're gonna get out of Kruger Mansion, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited for it. I have faith. I I have a lot of faith in this show. Mm -hmm. mm. Me too. I've been hearing the the pitches from Derek since 2019. You know, like I, I'm, I'm ready. Oh my gosh. Again, yeah. if you can support Totally Tops Television, it is worth it. Watch the pilot episode. Share it wherever you can, please. We need this as a show, <laughs> please. Yes. Please. Um, okay, so kind of going back to yourself for a minute, um, what are some video projects or big things that you want to make in the future? Doesn't have to be Total Drama or Disventure Camp or Crew Match related, it can just be anything that you want to make. What are some things that you want to do in the future with your channel? Oh, man. A phenomenal question. <laughs> well, one thing that I am currently doing is I just talked about how it was rough always being the host of the games and never getting to play in them. And then the ones that I did get to play in, I always felt like they just weren't as immersive as I wanted them to be. Yeah. And so that's why I, I started hosting because I wanted to create that universe. Uh, but something really dope one of my amazing friends, Dylan Clark, reached out to me last year and was like, yo, the Survivor game that we play on the next trip, because we always take a big trip together, all of us on the mm -hmm. crew mansion cast and the reunion people, where every year we Aww. meet in person and hang out. Aww. And we were like what are we doing for the game? And Dylan's like, I had just gotten him into the show Big Brother, which is very similar to Survivor. And he was like, okay, yo, we should totally play Big Brother. And I'm like, oh man, but if we did that, I would want to play. And then he was like, so then play. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I can't play and host at the same time. And he's like, well, obviously I'll host, you play. And I'm like, ooh, I don't know. Cause I felt like weird about it. Cause it was my YouTube video, you know? So I'm like, I don't know, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, I would barely be in the video. But then I'm like, okay, yeah, but I would barely be in the video. There's so many other characters in here. I'm like, this is actually kind of a cool dynamic. Yeah. I like this. And it gives me an opportunity to do it too. So we went into it with the story of I hosted last time and now I want to show these people how it's really done. How it's, it's done. Was, you know, oh and, my God. And so that was my whole like story of, of me trying to do that. And so I competed in... 10 other awesome people competed. The legendary Michael Kim competed. So we got to <laughs> be on the lookout for that. Mr. TD Ricky competed. Ricky! David Benton Jr. competed. Oh there my was God. An amazing cast. So many dope people. Adam Rudine competed. Same Adam! Short Kruger Mansion competed. Like, come on now. That's it exciting. Yeah, it's hype. So that, yeah. that is the big thing that I'm working on. That's the thing that I'm most excited for. And I'm so close to being done. And when I say this is the biggest video I've ever made, I'm not kidding. This is my Avengers Endgame. It's oh, going to be pushing oh, wow. three hours long. Oh my, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a movie. Cause Jesus. I, I, it's going to be, if you've ever watched a YouTube video where it's like the entire season of a show shrunk into like three hours oh my of highlights. God. it's basically that but so much more immersive and it's it's gonna be hype it's definitely for the long form people but you can watch it in chunks of course because it's an elimination based concept Ooh. which is why it's perfect yes oh okay that sounds really exciting yes you gotta watch it because 
just like what we ch- talked about earlier about how you gotta make every character feel important. Yeah. In this video, every contestant is important. Yeah. You have no idea who wins. Ooh, the big mystery. Yes, exactly. That's exciting. Uh, <laughs> when that video is done and posted, I will definitely link it in the description of this one and I will share it oh, on my yes. socials. Definitely go watch it when it's out. Because if you don't, then then why are you missing out on this opportunity? Just you why? You gotta do it. Yeah. You gotta go watch this. I'm doing so many of those. I, I have two more that I'm doing, actually. Oh? So I started this series. It's over Discord, so it's not in person. But it's mm-hmm. over Discord and everybody uses their cameras. And it is a YouTube video. Mm-hmm. And it's called... I, I, to be honest, I, I really struggled with a creative name, so I just u- went with Stevie's Showdown. I was like, Stevie's well, Showdown. Gonna get. So, so we call it Stevie Showdown, but I hosted two seasons of it so far. We're getting ready to host season three in two weeks, and once all those three are hosted and completed, I'm going to edit them all, and they're going to be released in similar fashion of this uh, Big Brother video that's coming out, where it will be in one massive video the entire season. And Ooh. that one is more like total drama in this venture camp. So for the Disventure camp fans out there, especially, it's for you. Ooh, okay. That's going to be exciting. Also, in the Big Brother video, oh. one of our contestants did cosplay as a Disventure camp contestant. Oh my god, who? But you've got to watch the video to find oh out. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, little tease dangling yeah. the keys in our faces. Okay, I see. Yes. We'll just have to wait and see. Exactly. Okay, and again with this next question, you kind of already answered it a bit here, but I'm going to ask it anyway because there might be more. What are some of your goals as a content creator this year in 2024? Uh, you know, I used to be a dog when it came to uploading on time man i never missed a day i had an active streak it was egregious i can't remember exactly how long it was but it was over two years of daily uploading oh my god and i missed it and it was very tragic when i stopped and then ultimately i ended up just never kind of going back to making full-time content yeah especially with total drama yeah and I have for a very long time missed it, but I've not felt anything that was calling me to come back, you know? There was always just the nostalgia of it and missing it and missing the people that I met and talked to all the time. And it was always fun to talk about the show, but with, you know, just some of the stuff that happened and yeah. uh, the nature of the show not being around forever, it eventually it just kind of got tiresome. And so I stopped for a while. And for me, my biggest goal right now is to get back to being the full-time guy that I was for oh. years because Like we've talked about, I've been making videos since 2010, and it took me a while to realize what I had, and I feel like I may have not appreciated it enough, and damn, I learned that lesson, (laughs) and and I'm ready to come back, you know, that that nine-year-old kid that was making YouTube videos in 2010 saw something in himself at nine years old and i owe it to him to fulfill that dream and to keep it going and so that's what i'm gonna do in 2024 okay that's exciting to see more stuff from you but you know don't don't force yourself to if you're exhausted you know what i mean if you do need to chill out you know no the the biggest thing is is doing videos that i want to do ah yes that is fun because mm. I, I that was my problem was I made a lot of videos that I didn't want to do like you know I, I would imagine it's not gonna bring any shock to anybody whenever I, by the time I was making top 10 Mr. Coconut moments I, I was kind of out of ideas <laughs> you know I was so mm. slow burnt out so uh, reacting I, to I fan art part 20 <laughs> Yeah, but there was only so much fan art I could react to. And I, I have thought about that, you know, an interesting segue. I've thought about doing 
uh, the occasional Total Drama video on my Noah channel because I'm more focused on the Stevie G channel now. Mm -hmm. But with Noah, I'm still doing uh, Does Venture Camp All Stars reactions, and uh, I want to do the occasional Total Drama video. And I yeah. have thought about reacting to fan art because I haven't reacted to fan art of the new reboot yet. Ooh. And also, I thought about doing that for Does Venture Camp as well. Uh oh. <laughs> but in a, uh, a a lot more of a, a fun way yeah, yeah it's gonna be a lot more a lot more fun <laughs> that's fair yeah yeah that's but gonna we'll we'll that's gonna be a blast of the past. Yeah. that's gonna be a blast be of fun. the past <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'll be weird for me for sure yeah the first fan art video that i do it's a little sounds like a little kid because i mean i was 16 when i did it and now oh god i don't even <laughs> God. Oh, that's wow. wild, man. I remember Yikes. when that video first came out. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it came out in 2017. Yeah. And that video did not deserve the views that it got. I, I go back and watch those videos, and I, I'm such a critic of myself, but I'm like, oh, these are so bad. Why was anybody watching these? But I, I don't know. It'd be fun to do it now with all the editing tips I've learned along the years. Yeah. You know, it's just... You were just wanting to make videos back then. Even then, I still find enjoyment out of out of your old videos. <laughs> <laughs> They're charming, you know. There was, uh, yeah, you could tell it was just a kid making YouTube videos from his bedroom for yeah, fun, you know? exactly. And that's all it needed to be, you know? Yeah, that's what YouTube was intended to be. Yeah. Um, okay, that was the last question. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on today. I really do appreciate it. You were amazing. Of course. Likewise, you are. Oh, are you kidding me? Thank you. Me? <laughs> what are you talking about me for? You're, you're the amazing one. Oh, oh no. ah, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's take this last little bit to promote your stuff. Oh, share whatever boy. you want to share, and I will link it in the description of this podcast. Oh, you're amazing. You know, for me... I would shout out Odd Nation Cartoons, but I imagine you already know about those guys. I, uh, I currently am working on this Big Brother video. I know mm -hmm. I was talking about it, but man, this is such a passion project for me. It really is like a movie, and I think it quite literally is the best video I have ever made in my entire life. And so that includes the thousands of Total Drama videos I made and Ooh. the every every video that i've made including the survivor that we did last oh wow week. so the stevie g channel in particular is mm. the main one where everything like that is going on and it's, it's so much fun to do that stuff because i have unlimited things to discuss or talk about when you don't limit yourself to just one show it's crazy how much else is out there. Yeah. And uh, so it's so much more fun. Yeah. And I still, you know, the Noah channel, yeah, I'm still going to post stuff on there occasionally like we talked about. But yeah. the Stevie G channel is where you're going to see the most effort from me and the most fun, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I will be sure to link the Stevie G YouTube channel in the description. Do check it out. Subscribe. Watch these videos. They're really fun and entertaining. They have a lot of charm yeah, to them. Right. I definitely recommend it. Thank you. Is there anything else that you want to say before we end today? Oh, man. What can I say? What I'll say is this. If you are not subscribing oh. to Odd Nation Cartoons and The Reality Project... Yes! ...that I did not talk yes. about, but I will plug my amazing friend dan aka mr Go. cove covington the coves himself he is amazing so talented i distinctly remember like in 2018 trying to talk him out on skype trying to talk him out of dropping out or switching his college major from like science to script writing and he actually did it and oh my I'm god i'm so glad he did i'm so glad he did i love that guy he's amazing you need to go follow the reality project because that one's getting slept on it really is it's so good love. 
It's oh man, it's gonna be so good. I have the script, the physical copy of oh. the pilot script in my office right now, and I got to read the beta version. And that is the beta version that I have. <laughs> it has all my original notes on it and everything. And it was even then in its original format so good. And it's so much better now. You guys need to watch it. Are you kidding me? Please. Please watch it. Also, to, to those, um, I promise I'll finish the second part of my reality resort video. I will. I promise. I've been procrastinating. Yeah. It's coming soon. I promise. But again, the hype of <laughs> please, you gotta go subscribe to Reality Cove. Subscribe to Stevie G. Subscribe to Odd Nation um, Cartoons. I mean, if you're on my channel, then I'm sure you are already. But subscribe to Odd Nation Cartoons. Subscribe to their Patreon. Subscribe to Stevie G. Thank you so much for coming on with me <laughs> today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Are you kidding me? This was so much fun. Absolutely. Anytime. Now, I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And before I do log off in the description, we have uh, my Patreon where you can subscribe to me from just $1 a month and you'll get some perks such as access to videos early, access to my art early, and even some free art if you go to some of the higher tiers. So if you do subscribe to my Patreon, I will sincerely appreciate it. And I hope you all have an amazing day. Goodbye!